Hello, I'm Jan Mulvin. You're watching the Red Men TV. Hello, welcome to the Red Men TV. A special show as Danny Ings has been confirmed as a Liverpool signing for next season. He's agreed personal terms with the mighty Reds and will join up with the club on the 1st of July when the transfer window opens. Um, this is doubtless because I haven't had quite enough chance to check on Twitter. Spark outrage across Liverpool's social media forums uh, as people froth at the mouth at the fact that we've not signed Karim Benzema, instead signing a 23-year-old centre-forward from Burnley. Um, I'm not quite sure where I, where I, I fall on the side of the fence, if, 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 if any side at all on this. The way I see it, first and foremost, that's two signings Liverpool have managed to get in the bag for basically next to nothing. Before, you know, we've got, what, two and a half weeks or so, two, three weeks till the transfer window actually opens. I consider that a good start of business for Liverpool. Let's have a little bit of a closer look at things, though. I've got some stats, which I have uh, hastily typed down as a piece of paper, which I will very professionally refer to now. Um, 11 goals and four assists in 35 Premier League appearances last season. What's notable from that? Because obviously everyone's going to be telling you that stat because it's right there. Um, only made one substitute appearance last season. So in the Premier League, he made 35 appearances. All of them start, didn't appear off the bench once, which I think is very telling, not just to his, his importance, but his, um, his resilience as well uh, for Burnley. Last season, scored 21 goals, got six assists in 40 championship appearances. Um, actually, similar, similar um, in terms of his sub-appearances there as well. Let's have a closer look at his goals last season. I say 11 in the Premier League. Four of them were headers, three left-footed, four right-footed. Thank you very much to the Squawker Comparison Matrix for that one. Uh, again, you know, not not world-class return in terms of goals, but what's quite interesting in that is that, you know, the spread of them across the, the three ways in which you can score head, left-foot and right-foot. And of all those 11 goals, every single one of them was inside the box. No goals from outside the 18-yard box for Danny Ings last season. So, you know, Fox in the box likes to be in the right places when you consider... The, stay, the players that Liverpool had last season, Mario Balotelli and, and Ricky Lambert in particular, both do their best work, however good that best work may be. Uh, outside the box, Danny Ings very much likes to be in the goal-scoring positions, scoring goals, which is clearly something Liverpool desperately, desperately lack in the squad. Uh, created 35 chances last season, which is two more than Sergio Aguero. Uh, although he did play two more games than him and nearly 500 minutes more than the Argentines, so, so treat that with a pinch of salt. But nevertheless, I thought it was quite interesting. Um, interesting fact, he's played in the Premier League, the Championship, League One, League Two and the Conference South. Doubtless drawing uh, Ricky Lambert comparisons straight away there. What a great story. Climbed his way up through the leagues. Um, and a, a nice little note in December 14, this is straight from Wikipedia, verbatim, he launched the fund of the Danny Ings Disability Sport Project to provide football coaching to children with disabilities and learning difficulties after being inspired by a young disabled Burnley fan. And some people might say that's not very important, but in terms of Liverpool Football Club and what Liverpool do in, in the community and charity work and all that, I think he'll fit in absolutely spectacularly in that regard. Look, he's 23 years old, he's got an eye for goal, he, he scored a, a decent amount of goals, got a good return in a side that basically, you know, was all, um, I'd, I'd basically relegation written all over it from minute one, they, 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 they managed to get into the Premier League, so... <sighs> that noise sums up my signing of Danny Ings for me. Am I thrilled by it? No. I don't think it's possible to be thrilled by the signing of Danny Ings, much like I don't think it's possible to be thrilled by the signing of James Milner. Do I think it's a good signing? Absolutely. You know, I, I can't fault the, the transfer logic thus far. And again, you know, we did the live show talk about Milner last week, Chris and I. And, and the word I said, and I'm going to use it again, I'm going to be using it all summer, is context. Is Danny Ings a good signing right here, right now? In context, it could well prove to be a very, very shrewd piece of business. In isolation, no. Liverpool badly lacking in goals, badly lacking in world-class players in that squad last season. And Danny Ings isn't that. Danny Ings is not a world-class player and is not a world-class addition to the squad. Does he make the first 11 better? If Daniel Sturridge is fit, no. If he's not fit, yes. Because he's, he, he, I think he would fit. He would, he would have slotted in. If we'd got him in January, I think we'd have been we'd have fared far better in attacking sense. He's just not look. He's not. It's not. Like I said it. He's not Karen Benzema, is he? You know, and and he's never going to be. He may well maybe he will be. Who knows? I mean, he's not because obviously 
that's he's a completely different person. But you know, in, t- in terms of what he can bring, maybe maybe he can grow, maybe he can become that type of quality player. I'm always wary of signing players from the lesser lights of the Premier League. We don't have a great track record of, of those players coming in and making the step up, not in the last 10, 15 years, certainly. So I've got hope for him. I've got He's got high hopes. He's got bags of ability. He's very direct. He likes being in the box. He does know how to score goals. But when we look at it, Liverpool, by comparison to the, the, the teams who are sitting above us in the Premier League at the end of last season, is he going to be the difference maker? Is he what, what it's going to take to get Liverpool back into the champion, uh, back to the Champions League? Immediate thoughts, no. I want to know yours, though. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the, of the sign of Danny Ings. You know, it's going to be for a nominal fee. I've I seen reports of £6 million. Look, for £6 million, I think that's a steal. If you consider £6 million essentially for Milner and Ings, which is, you know, making a point for the sake of making a point, I think that's a very good way to start Liverpool's business. But the context of it is, if we're, spend, if we, if we're buying players on free transfers or, or for nominal fees... Hopefully it means we're saving up the mega bucks for, for real big name signings. And if that's the case, that proves to be a great bit of business. If it's not, if we're literally just going to buy players on the cheap this summer, Lipper on a spot of bother. Uh, so yeah, let us know your thoughts. What do you think the approach is for Liverpool in the transfer window? Do you agree with what I've said there? Are they just keeping the powder dry, keeping as much money available to buy big name players? Or is this all we can expect from Liverpool and FSG? Thoughts in the comments below. Try not to use your caps lock for the entirety of it, if you'd be so kind, because it hurts my eyes. Uh, anyway, give the video a thumbs up. We've got more content coming this week. We're going to be analysing this transfer in far greater detail. There'll be full panel of guests on the sofa tonight. We're going to be discussing that. We're going to be doing the transfer war chess game where everyone on the couch has to build Liverpool back up to a bastion of invincibility this summer using a £35 million um, fees we've already got plus selling players. What would they do? Who would they buy? Who would they sell? Who would they hire? Who would they sack? How to get Liverpool back into the Champions League. Going to be playing that all on the RedmenTV.com. Go over there. It's free for a month uh, and then it's just £2 a month after that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hello, welcome to Red Men TV. We are live to talk about the signing of James Milner. Uh, it's been officially announced by Liverpool Football Club.